Welcome back everybody. Thanks for joining us once again. Today we are testing the Motive Evoke. If you like what we do, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe and check us out on Patreon. First impressions, wow, the Evoke is colorful. I still think it rolls nice with all that neon bubblegum stuff going on. All right, let's get into it. So the uh, colors make a statement. <laughs> the question is what statement remains when we roll the ball down the lane. Happy to say we mostly enjoyed this strong ASIM. So I'll first note that the pattern played a little more medium than it did the last couple of reviews, which played a little slick. So I see a ball this dull out of the box with an ASIM core, and you kind of expect a strong, heavy rolling piece. You more or less get that with the Evoke. It's slotted on the far left of the chart under the smooth motion in, in, in Motive's uh, ball guide, and I think that's fair. Motive puts it between the Jackal Ambush and Pride Dynasty in strength. If you go further to the right at the top, you have the Raptor Fury and Jackal Ghost, which you know become more angular. Question for me is, as someone who preaches simple arsenal building, is there enough space between the Ambush and Dynasty to put an Evoke? How would something like the Evoke, Fury, and Ghost compare, and can they be in the same bag? Well, stay tuned, and I'll come back to that at the end of the video. Now, in terms of the evaluation, you know, from my perspective, uh, with pure reaction, you can see that it has decent mid lane, uh, doesn't feel super early. It also has a nice down lane punch, considering how much it reads. What I'll say is that I don't think I can massively open up the lane with this ball. It doesn't store enough energy but it it had an excellent punch in motion when I'm basically in the track. For me, that's maybe just left of the third arrow out to the break point. From there, I, I really like that heavy barreling roll through the pins, and my findings line up to where it fits in the motive ball guide. Tyler's up next, and I would say the ball looked very good for him. It's closer to the fourth arrow, so that's his typical area of track in a normal house shot. It has a, a nice grip or read of the mid lane and a really heavy roll through the pins. It, it looks continuous and, and with excellent control. If he went 20 at the arrows to about 8 or 9, it looked fantastic. Everything you want, you want from a fairly strong piece to control the lanes. It's the mistake of getting it out to 5 too late down lane where it really stops and dies. Now, this is a walled house shot, and balls that get out late simply die. Uh, it, then that's no surprise. However, if you get it out a little earlier, like, you know, near 40 feet, it'll go, and you can see that in the right part of the lane. The ball works very well also. As this Tyler gets deeper, you start to see the ball's weakness, which is really you know, opening up the lanes or just covering too many boards. With that said, that's not what this ball is for, so no harm, no foul. It's just important to understand that this is a ball, f you know, from your typical trajectories, but not when it's drier and needing a deeper line. All right, now on to Brian, and the look was interesting for him. The last few tests, the condition played heavier, like we said, so balls like the harsh reality, Looked fantastic because they, they better match the intent and he was able to play close to the friction line to get a nice blend and punch. Now with this condition being more medium and this ball being a stronger ball, it pushed him a couple of boards away from the friction line as it would just react too strongly. However, as we've seen in the past, it creates some hang for him because if he doesn't get it to the friction, the ball floats too long once he kind of moves in a little bit. So the matchup on this pattern was a little tricky for him. He had to catch some more oil in the fronts, but push it to the friction early to get motion. And then, you know, really flirt with, say, a 50-50 chance at a 10-pin. Ultimately, his best look was getting in around 12 or 13 and kind of slow rolling it. Uh, looked quite good with that. Uh, and I would say, again, here's where the Evoke really did a nice job of turning over and not feeling very forward and stoppy, going through the pins pretty nicely. So final thoughts. Let's come back to what I was talking about with Arsenal fit. Firstly, I feel like the Evoke could fit in some place near the strong defined or strong control. I know the idea of defining control can seem a little tricky, but I describe Define as a core that wants to right itself, and that could still lead to a relatively smooth motion on lane, but it means the core heavily dictates the relative motion. 
and that's where the definition comes from. But back to the ball guide, I personally do not see enough space between the ambush and dynasty to put the evoke in. And if you do decide this looks smooth enough to be a strong control, fine. But that's the same spot as, say, a Raptor Fury, even though it does it a little differently. I mean, the Ghost also is theoretically between the Ambush and Dynasty. So what do you do there? I, long story short, there's too much going on in terms of what's available and how to fill two spots in the bag. I do like the Evoke, but it's unclear if it differentiates itself enough to take a spot in the bag. However, if you've already had, say, a Pride Dynasty for a while, then sure, throw the Evoke in there to replace it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, and uh, if you have any comments, please post them below.